We are constantly bombarded with information about the people around us. To help us make sense of this social noise, our brain makes rapid snap judgments, categorizing and labeling others on the basis of visual, especially facial, information. The study that we ran at the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology at the University of Glasgow directly investigates how we mentally represent age groups. We compared mental representations of age in young people, students, and older people about current retirement age. However, examining representational biases underlying social judgments is always tricky. If people become aware that their biases are under scrutiny, they may try and compensate for them, even with something as uncontroversial as age estimation. In our lab, therefore, we use a method called reverse correlation that avoids this problem. Two groups of our participants, younger and older, came to the lab thinking they were being asked to judge the age of a large number of pictures of real faces taken from the database. On every trial, they saw three pictures of faces and were asked to choose the picture that best corresponded to an age range. Unbeknownst to them, our participants were looking at the same underlying picture of a face, with noise on top that made the single picture look slightly different on each trial. Here's how the stimuli were made. We take Gabor filters, black and white gratings, at six spatial frequencies, six orientations and two polarities, and tile them across the stimulus. Each tile is weighted by a randomly chosen parameter. We then sum the weighted gabors and add them to the face. We do this for all three faces. As you can see, they now all look slightly different. When the participant selects a stimulus on each trial, they are really choosing the noise template that alters the appearance of the face. At the end of the experiment, we take all the noise templates chosen for each age category and sum them for each participant. We call these information images mental representations because they capture the participant's knowledge of the physical appearance of an aged face. Technically, they project the participant's knowledge of an aged face onto the parameters of a recursive organization of GABOR filters. The power of our method to study mental representations of aging is twofold. First, the experimenter does not need to specify a priori aging features that they believe participants should use to judge age. This limits experimental bias. Second, participants do not even need to be consciously aware of the aging features that are represented in their mind. As long as their age decisions systematically use face features randomly for the Gabor noise, the reverse correlation method will capture them and our analysis will reveal what these features are. Here, for one participant, are the young and old information images. As you can see, our methods work because each image modifies the apparent age of the underlying face. Each is the sum of the Gabor noise associated with the young and old age judgments for this participant. To test whether these mental representations convincingly portray the intended age groups to other people, we needed to perform a second experiment. We took two new groups of naive people and asked them to give a precise estimate of the age of the resulting images of faces. Mental representations in all three age categories of older people were perceived to be their expected ages. However, mental representations from the young participant group were perceived differently. The representations of middle age from young participants could not be discriminated from the representations of old age. So it appears that young people have a dichotomous representation of age. Young people like them and older everyone else. Older adults' representations also span the full age range of expected ages, while our younger participants' representations reflected a compressed range. So what's the practical implication of this result? In older participants, the particularly detailed representation of young age could constitute a bias, idealized representation of the young. And paradoxically, this might underlie older participants' tendency to overestimate the age of young people. We also examined in detail which feature locations most accurately predicted numerical age judgments and found that the darkness of skin around the nose almost completely determined the age estimate. We think this may be related to the decreased reflectance of skin in areas with high exposure to UV, like the nose and cheeks. We show that old people at least have more accurate mental representations of facial age, whereas young people have an underdeveloped mental representation that divides the age spectrum into young, like them, and old, everyone else. Our results show that, contrary to popular public belief, older minds can sometimes depict socially relevant information more accurately than their younger counterparts.